The world's population surpassed 8 billion a, a couple of years ago. Today, it stands at 8.2 billion. My name is Sarah Hertog, and I am part of a, a team of demographers that every two years revises the world population prospects to get an updated sense of the uh, size of the world's population and how we expect it to grow and change over the coming decades. One of the key findings from our new report is that we do expect that the size of the world's population is going to peak within the current century. We estimate that it will reach that peak of about 10.3 billion people sometime probably around the 2080s. We know that the population at its peak is going to be larger than it is today and it's going to be much older than it is today. The age structure will have shifted to older ages. What that means for our societies and the implications for sustainable development hinge on how well we plan for that larger and older world population today and, and in the coming years. We know that there are some countries that are expected to double before the, the middle of the century in terms of population. They continue to have extremely high fertility and to grow at a, a very fast rate. The challenge in these countries is to meet the needs of that growing population to make sure that children have access to education and health care, that women and, and men have access to sexual and reproductive health, that there's jobs to absorb the large numbers of young people who are entering the workforce. In other countries where population is aging very rapidly or declining, there are economic challenges associated with that, there are social challenges. We need policies to ensure that people have what they need and that no one is left behind. The three components of population change are fertility, the number of births, mortality, the number of deaths, and then at the country level, net international migration. Of course, at the global level, net international migration is equal to zero. The life expectancy at birth at the global level is about 73 years today, and that is an increase of more than eight years since 1995. This is remarkable. This is one of the greatest achievements of human humanity ever. We've seen just generally improvements in survival, reductions in mortality, and we expect that by the end of the century, the life expectancy could exceed 81 years. Today at the global level, the total fertility rate is about 2.2 children per woman. And that's almost one child per woman less than it was uh, in 1990. 2.1 children per woman is the replacement rate, which is the level of total fertility in order for the population size to stabilize in the absence of any net international migration. Population trends are integrally related to gender equality. In many parts of the world where fertility remains very high and the population is growing, women are having more children than they say that they want. When women have an education, when they have access to the tools and resources, information and family planning that they need to make decisions about the number, timing and spacing of their children, that we see fertility fall. Where fertility is very low and populations are declining, what we see is a lot of women are having fewer children than they say that they want. And I think gender equality is at the heart of that as well. There are all kinds of constraints, things like work-life balance, the need to uh, do care work for aging parents, the high cost of housing and education, inequality in the division of labor within the household. And so just as achieving gender equality is essential to ensuring that women in high fertility countries are able to have the families that they want, so too in low fertility countries. At the country level, migration can have quite a large impact, especially on the trajectory of, of the future population. It's not predictable in the same way that fertility and mortality are. It depends on demographic factors, it depends on the economic context, and it depends on the political situation. For a number of countries, uh, those that are declining in population size, net migration may be a way to bolster the population size going forward. 
middle of the last century, when the population was growing at its most rapid rate at more than 2% per year, there have been really dire warnings about the capacity of our planet to absorb growing numbers of people and meet their needs. In truth, some of the most dire warnings have not come to pass. Technologies have improved and we've been able to provide food, shelter, water for growing numbers of population, more than we ever anticipated that we would need. It's really up to us and up to our governments and our policymakers to prepare us and begin planning now to meet the needs of a growing number of people while ensuring a sustainable future for our planet.